Hello there, you stunning, ravishing person. You, this is Chris from Techspert, and I'm here today with a Fairphone 3. It costs you 450 euros direct from Fairphone, or here in the UK, you can grab it on Vodafone from 37 quid a month. Uh, it's not the most impressive specs around or anything like that, but like previous Fairphones, it's all about making minimal impact on the environment. It's going to do a full unboxing and in depth tour of all of the specs, the features, and everything else you need to know about the Fairphone 3. And for more on the latest the greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that there notifications bell. Cheers! The first up, I actually really like the box as well. It reminds me a little bit of the OnePlus uh, 7T boxes, funky bit of tax there. Here I am, rock you like a Fairphone 3. Okay, notice I'll just cut that bit out. Uh, but yeah, no, seriously like it. It's a nice classy bit of minimalist IKEA style uh, design work there. Very nice. There we go. There's the phone. I made for you, for your memories, for your connections, for your distractions, for our world, for the people, for the change. Very rousing speech. I felt like I really needed a nice bit of orchestral backing or something. And as it states underneath, uh, for the future, send us your old phone using this box. So you can keep the box handy, send it in when you're done with it, and they will recycle all of the components. So one of the best things, one of the more unique aspects of the Fairphones is the fact that you can take this dinky little screwdriver that you get bundled inside, you can actually open up the Fairphone and then uh, replace any components that need changing. Be it the screen, the battery, uh, whatever you need. Uh, so let's just stick that aside and see what else you get in the box. So you also get a quick start guide, health and safety guide. Just explains a little bit more about the phone and the general ethos of it all. Uh, sadly, you don't get a charging plug or cable, as you'll notice there. It's one of the only phones that doesn't come uh, with one. The idea is that you just basically use your old one so it saves you having a drawer full of cables and chargers. Of course, you better hope that your old phone used a bit of Type-C USB, otherwise you're basically going to have to throw a bit of money at either Fairphone or Amazon or some other company in order to actually get a USB charging cable. Still, the good news is that Fairphone does at least bundle in a funky little bumper as well, which comes, I think, attached to the phone and it's uh, certainly on there pretty damn solid that's for sure there we go so there you go it just adds a little bit of extra protection to the fair phone uh, it should be a fairly rugged beast in general anyway actually I'll just leave the bumper off for now so we can check out the rest of the phone in its full naked glory definitely feels like a uh, bit of a rugged mother that's for sure you get Gorilla Glass 5 on the front so that'll add a bit of extra protection as well and on the back here as you can see there it's actually a translucent uh, design as you can see inside into the battery and uh, the various other components and that translucent and chassis is actually constructed from recycled materials as well all fairly sourced and everything as you can see there though definitely a bit of a chunky monkey definitely reminds me of some of the old school androids and those iPhones of course and 189 grams definitely got a bit of a heft to it as well although not quite as bad as some of the super super massive 6.57 inch androids that have uh, fondled in 2019 so as I mentioned before one of the big deals of the Fairphone is the fact that you can open it up and you can replace any of the components inside basically um, so there's a handy little tab thing here where you can just pull open the back just like on traditional Android smartphones. There we go, that back plate just prizes off like so. so that means you can immediately uh, pull out the battery if you want and uh, get that replaced. Again, just like uh, all the old traditional Androids. As you can see there, you've got your micro SD memory card slot and you've got a dual SIM slot as well, SIM 1 and SIM 2, and that's separate from the micro SD, so that's good to see. And getting some serious nostalgia from all of this. And then of course you've got your dinky screwdriver, so if you want to replace any other bits, just get stuck in there. There are many, many, many screws and they're all absolutely tiny, so you'll have to be very careful that they don't go skittering off across the floor and get lost forever. I feel just like that Jerry Rig anything guy. This is amazing. Oh, these things are a real pin to get, to get out. And you actually get them out of the bloody thing. The screwdriver doesn't appear to be magnetic, which is not really helping. Oh, shit. Oh, Christ. I've got and lost it. I've lost the bloody screwdriver. Where the hell is it? Okay, well, I've actually lost the screwdriver, and this is going to take forever anyway, because there's like a million screws, so you get the general idea. So let's just see if we've got any gas in the tank, and then we can get the Fairphone 3 all set up and uh, take a bit of a tour of the software. So there we have it. The Fairphone 3 is all set up and ready to rock. Now, first of all, that displays a 5.65-inch Full HD Plus IPS panel, one of the smallest displays you'll find on any smartphone in 2019. Unfortunately, as you can see, they're fairly chunky bezels as well, so it doesn't mean that the Fairphone 3 is a compact handset. It's definitely a bit of a handful, can just about reach up to that uh, notifications drawer on the rest. Got to say as well, it's quite weird having the uh, the power button and the volume buttons housed here on the left edge of the smartphone as well. I'm so used to them being on the right, uh, but certainly pleasingly comfortable to use. No worries on that front. And as you can see there, you've actually got a rear-mounted physical fingerprint sensor 
Delta here on the back end of the Fairphone 3 as well. Something that's becoming quite the rarity in 2019, which is a bit of a shim. Uh, it's housed really, really far up the handset though, almost to the very top edge. So I'm finding that I'm having to stretch a little bit in order to reach it. But uh, once you do tap it, it seems pretty responsive and accurate and you're in your desktops within about a second or so. Get back to that panel briefly as well. As I mentioned before, it's a full HD plus IPS screen. Uh, so it seems absolutely fine for your HD content. As you can see, they're just streaming a bit of full HD Ghostbuster trailer action. Color reproduction seems absolutely natural. On top brightness, not one of the best. This is pretty much top brightness here and it's not exactly eye shatteringly powerful, but hopefully will prove all right for your outdoor shenanigans. Come on, darling. So it's just a mono speaker output, uh, bottom fire and unfortunately don't get stereo speaker output, but on top volume there, pretty powerful. Should have no problem listening to uh, music, watching a video in a noisy environment. And you may well have noticed by now that it's a nice pleasingly stock version of Android here on the Fairphone 3. No crapware installed on there, just pure Google goodness, etc. Unfortunately, it is Android 9, not the latest Android 10. Uh, so you don't get fresh features like the dark mode or the swipe navigation gestures, which is a bit of a shame. No idea when Android 10 is actually come into this thing either, I've been, been rather silent on that front. And if you want to download content, uh, you get 64 gigs of storage on board, which is sort of reasonable for this sort of price point. The good news is it is expandable via micro SD up to a further 400 gigs, so no worries there. As for what's running the show, well, it's Qualcomm Snapdragon 632 platform backed by four gigs of RAM. Now, the Snapdragon 632 is a fairly basic chipset found in the likes of the Motorola G7 and the G7 Power, a couple of phones which are considerably less expensive than the Fairphone 3. Overall, I found that those phones ran absolutely fine for everyday shenanigans. Um, as long as you don't expect to get super smooth frame rates while gaming or anything like that, you know, they'll do the job for a bit, web browse and media stream and things like that. Of course, it is a bit of a shame that a 450 euro phone sports that 600 series uh, Snapdragon chipset rather than one of the 700s or perhaps even the flagship 800. Still hopefully it means that the 3000 milliamp battery will give you all day life no problems at all. You've got the usual of course battery managers uh, all that kind of shenanigans in there as well. I'll be giving this a full-on test as my uh, personal handset as well so I will give you an update in my in-depth Fairphone 3 review uh, when that comes probably in the new year. And then last up on the hardware front is the single lens rear snapper. Quite a rare in 2019, especially as now even Google has started slapping two lenses on its pixels instead of just one. It's a 12 megapixel shooter with an f1.8 aperture. If you open up the camera app, as you can see, you've got quite a few different toggles and camera modes to play around with. Take a photo just like so. It seems like we're getting quite a strange hue um, through this uh, this camera lens. Everything's looking very dark and very blue indeed. Uh, but as you see, you've got a portrait mode on board. So you don't have a dedicated depth sensor, of course, just that single lens setup. So not expecting fantastic results from that but you never know I could be proved wrong. On the video front you can shoot up to 4k resolution footage uh, there's no optical image stabilization or anything like that it's all digital uh, but hopefully you should shoot some nice looking home movies of course you've got slow motion and time lapse on board as well and then got a bit of pro manual controls as well if you want to mess around with the likes of the white balance the shutter speed all that kind of stuff. It'll be very interesting to see what kind of quality photos and videos you get out of this thing and then you also have an 8 megapixel front facing camera as well I believe it's an f2.0 and again everything seems to to be a really weird here. It doesn't seem to be dealing particularly well with these studio lights. Um, so yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on that for sure. Um, yeah, you just take a quick snap like so. As you can see, you once again have a portrait mode using that front facing camera. So yeah, not expecting a huge amount out of the camera tech to be honest, but again, stay tuned for the full review to see if uh, it's actually any good. And there you have it, that in a nutshell is the Fairphone 3. So for that 450 euro asking price, the specs and features leave a bit to desired. And Android 9 as well, it's a shame that it's the out of date version of Google's OS. But you know what, I really like the ethos behind the Fairphone. I love the fact that it's made from recycled materials. It's trying to do its bit to help save this planet on which we all inhabit. So that's definitely to be commended. So stay tuned for my in-depth Fairphone 3 review. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers.